Durable is a word that is often associated with the decade-long racing career of Grey Way, also known as the Washdyke Wonder during his heyday of the 1970s. Successful is another apt description, as Greyway chalked up 51 race wins and established himself as one of the best sprinter milers of the post-war era. Greyway is plugging on the top weight in great start. He's pulling out that extra that makes him a great horse. He's not in front yet, but he is soon after. And Greyway has gone to the lead. What a great horse. Greyway, Matt Fetch and three quarters of a length away. Two lengths. Greyway's breeder was Peter South, who'd been around horses all his life, including 11 years as an amateur jockey. He tried to sell Greyway's dam, Waybrook, when she was in foal because he had too many horses. But fate intervened when the highest bid at auction was less than the service fee for the sire, Grey William. So South kept her, and Greyway made himself at home on the family property. He was a strong horse, full of spirit and very curious. That curiosity almost killed him when he became trapped in a shed. Greyway tried to exit via the window and badly gashed his legs and neck. It was only the skill of the vet and 149 stitches that saved him. The original plan was to make Grey Way a jumper, but when sent to train with Pat Corboy at Washdyke, he showed good speed as a gelding. His first race was over 1,000 metres at Rangiora on Labor Day 1972. He won and paid $28.30. Grey Way was a great traveller, happy on floats and boats and racing on tracks far and wide. He coped with a schedule that would have shattered most other horses. By midway through his three-year-old season, he had 10 wins and 11 places. More glory beckoned in a duel with top sprinter King's Romance in the railway handicap at Trentham. And on the outside is Grey Way and Bronson right in behind these, followed then by Norelco March on down the outside, but Grey Way's the one in command, Will in command too, and Norelco finishing well on the inside and right on the outside, the favourite King's Romance, and it's Grey Way, Norelco and King's Romance, Grey Way, Norel, King's Romance and Norelco, then Bronson. By 1974, Grey Way's charisma was attracting fans to the tracks and the Washdyke stables. One of them was George Mackay. He was retired and devoted himself to Grey Way as strapper and personal assistant for the rest of his racing career. South had waited a long time for a successful horse and he decided to test Grey Way in Australia in the four-year-old season. The wet tracks didn't suit. They returned with one win from four starts. It was as a five-year-old that Greyway established himself as a sprinter miler of great class, winning 13 races. By now, Bob Skelton was the regular jockey. South had rung looking for Bill Skelton to ride as champion. Bob took the call and said Bill was away, so he would be more than happy to help out. Skelton quickly learned Greyway's secret to success. He had one sprint in a race, a tremendous short burst that could blow away the opposition. It was a matter of timing it just right, and the battle with Upek in the Awapuni Gold Cup in 1976 was a classic demonstration. About a neck away on the inside there, Bob Skelton asking him to lengthen stride. Is he going to? He's going to, and he's doing it. Greyway has leveled up to Upek, and Greyway starting to draw away from Upek. And Greyway and Bob Skelton go to the line to win it, and win it well. A great ride. Followed in second place. It was a course Upec. record. Greyway took four starts to regain his peak form as a six year old. He did it in style by beating Showgate at Rickerton. Then in the autumn, he produced what is regarded as his greatest performance. Greyway went up against a class field in the 1977 Easter Handicap, carrying 60.5 kilos. No horse since Sleepy Fox in the 1940s had won with as much weight. With 100 metres to go, Grey Way had a wall of horses in front of him. Tudor Light flying through on the rails by Spring, the Linked Demand down towards the post. Tudor set for pride and Tudor Light and here's Grey Way coming for Joe Dennis Twain and so is Kiwi Kim. And Grey Way has thrust his way through. Now there's a photo. Grey Way, Tudor Light, Kiwi Kim by Spring, and Shift for pride. A neck covering the five of them. What a fantastic finish. It was Grey Way's first win on a right hand track and it also helped make him equal top stakes earner for the 1976-77 season with $78,000. Grey Way wasn't the same force as a seven and eight year old, but the winds crept up with Snooky Cowan, now regularly in the saddle. The Washdyke Wonder eventually caught up to and passed Black Duke's record of 46 in 1979. By the 10 year old season, there was a sole aim, one win for the half century. It came in September of 1980 at Geraldine. Retirement followed after two more races, leaving Greyway with the outstanding record of 51 wins from 159 starts. 
49 placings also helped lift his career earnings to $243,000. Gray Way remained just as popular in retirement, and the Souths found a novel way of thanking the many fans who wrote about the champion. The now pure white Gray Way still loved to travel, and along with his faithful strapper George, would make appearances at parades around New Zealand. For those who saw the champion race, and given his longevity and travel habits that would include many race fans in the 1970s, their lasting impression of Grey Way will always be of a champion with a brilliant turn of speed and a fierce desire to win.